everyone welcome to today's lecture so this is lecture five we're still on thermodynamics and we're still looking at the second law of thermodynamics so now we're going to combine this second law of thermodynamics with uh, heat engines and uh, the, uh, yeah we'll talk about the cannot engines we'll also talk about refrigerators and uh, air conditioners and then at the end we'll also look at heat pumps all right so this is what i'm talking about we we'll look at cannot engines refrigerators and um, air conditioners and then from there we we'll look at entropy and then we we'll also have to discuss heat pumps all right so what is a cannot engine so a cannot engine is just an ideal engine yeah it's an ideal engine it doesn't exist in nature but it's okay it's just there for experimental purposes yeah, and it's just there as a reference whenever they are making an engine or whenever they are trying to uh, repair an engine, they use um, they, they, they use what is called a cannot engine Yeah, because it gives the maximum efficiency. Yeah, so for you to at least know how efficient an engine is, you have to, uh, you have to compare it to its uh, maximum efficiency. So how do you do that? First, you find the cannot efficiency, which is found by using temperatures. It's absolute temperatures, yeah, the weekend temperatures. And then, after finding that, you you also take the readings now on the engine, or you use uh, the, the the heat energies to find the efficiency, yeah. And then you compare the two efficiencies, the, the, the two efficiencies, the one that you found using the absolute temperatures, which is the cannot efficiency and the other efficiency that is um, found using um, using the energies the heat energies okay let's take a look at some notes so to see how to increase efficiency a French scientist Sadi Cannot in this, is, this was around 1796 uh, to 1832 examined the characteristic of an ideal engine uh, now it's called a cannot engine. So these engines do not exist. No cannot engine actually exists. Yeah, but as a theoretical idea, it played, and I mean, it played an important role in the development and understanding of the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah. So this cannot engine is there. Uh, this cannot engine is there to. To just help in experimental uh what's this in experiments in short yeah, in the labs and in the workshops yeah okay so the idealized cannot engine consists of a four process uh, i mean consists of four processes done in a cycle uh two which are adiabatic and we know that if um, a process is adiabatic means that the the heat energy there is equal to zero and then the other two are isothermal so meaning the change in temperature in those two uh, processes uh, is simply just equal to zero yeah, so I've explained this part each of the processes was considered to be reverse to be done reversibly yeah so a real process a real process on the other hand would occur more quickly so these uh, these processes when uh, they were making this w when they are making this cannot engine in these processes uh, the processes themselves were very or were considered or assumed to be very slow yeah to be very slow to a point that they are considered as a series of equilibrium yeah they are considered to be in a series of equilibrium states and the whole process could be done in reverse with no change in the magnitude of the work done or heat exchange uh, i mean or heat exchange so uh but in normal circumstances when you are doing these real, th these processes the real processes they have irreversibilities like friction and turbulence so all these are present in the real process but in the ideal process we consider that these irreversibilities do not exist yeah so that's why we use the the working temperatures to find uh the what is the the, the uh, to find the efficiency i'll show you what i'm talking about 
Okay, so because of these factors, a real process cannot be done precisely in reverse. The turbulence would be uh, different and the heat loss to friction would not reverse itself. Um, yeah, the heat loss uh, to, friction, to friction would not reverse itself. Thus, real processes are irreversible. Yeah, they are irreversible. That's why I said they consist of irreversibilities like friction and um, turbulence. Yeah, even just heat loss itself. So these are the, uh, the these are the processes that we are talking about. We have two isothermal processes that were used that were considered during the uh, idealization of the Carnot engine, or yeah, during the making of uh, this Carnot engine. So we have two isothermal uh, processes. We have is uh, isothermal expansion and isothermal compression, and then we also have adiabatic compression and adiabatic uh, expansion there. So you can see uh, these lines there. They represent uh, th th some of. I mean, these lines are isotherms. Uh, these two lines, this one and this <coughs> other one there, they are isotherms, meaning they represent. Uh, the points, or rather the conditions in, a, in, in an engine with uh, a constant temperature. Okay, so the cannot showed that the the cannot showed uh, the showed that for an ideal reversible engine, the heats and uh, the heats are proportional to the operating temperatures. So what they mean by saying the heats are proportional to the operating temperatures, they mean the QH. Uh, over QL, this ratio is simply just equal to um, this ratio is simply just equal to uh, TH over TL. So when you have this ratio, uh, it means that QH is equal to uh, TL is equivalent to TL, and uh, the ratio of uh, QL is also equal to uh, I mean TL. So there, what you can do is from the efficiency formula that we know for a heat engine we know that the efficiency of the heat engine is is simply just given by the output and the output in a heat engine is simply just the work yeah the output work over uh, qh which is the input heat yeah so we know to say work work is written as qh minus uh, uh, ql because we know that w uh, the process itself is conserved, so we know that if it's conserved, we have uh, TH. I mean QH coming from this side. If it's conserved, we have QH coming from this side, and then work re being removed as one of the outputs, and we also have uh, QL being removed as the heat um, output. Yes, so we have output work this side so if it's conserved it means that when you add ql and the work you have to get qh so this is what it means and then when you make w which is the work done i mean sorry the work output uh when you make it as a subject of the formula you have this so from there we can say w is given by qh minus ql and then we divide everything by qh so from there we can now divide everything. This QH and TQH, we have 1 minus um, uh, QL, QL over QH. So this is what we found as the efficient, but this is not what I want to talk about. Let me now, uh, we are trying to derive the formula for efficiency of a Carnot engine. So let us now do that quickly. So this work, since we are saying the energies are proportional to the temperatures to the working temperatures meaning while there is qh we can put th and then where there is uh, okay so th then minus uh, tl so if you can write the work in this format it means that you can replace that th minus tl on top there and then we divide everything by qh so qh can also be replaced by th So you can also simplify this to 1 minus TL over TH. So this is how simple uh, the formula for efficiency of a Carnot engine is. So 
this one you can just add ideal engine e ideal to show that it's a formula for the cannot engine all right so what i've explained is simply just this here okay i've explained this is the cannot efficiency all right so let's look at this example here an engine a manufacturer makes uh the following claims an engine man manufacturer makes the following claims an engine's heat input per second is nine kilojoules at 435 kelvins and then a heat output per second is four kilojoules at uh, 285 kelvins and then do you believe these claims so as an engineer you don't have you don't just have to accept anything without testing you have to test them you know if the given data is correct or wrong so how do you test that so you can first find the cannot efficiency using the temperatures then after finding the cannot efficiency you also find the the normal efficiency using the energy so the normal efficiency is given by uh, qh minus ql over qh and then so when we replace there we have nine nine times ten to the power three joules uh, minus four point i mean four times ten to the power three uh, joules everything divided by uh, everything divided by qh which is nine point uh nine times ten to the power three yeah so when you divide this you are going to find your answer there and then after finding the answer you also find the efficiency for an ideal engine so the efficiency for an ideal engine we said we use the absolute i mean the absolute working temperatures or the absolute operating temperatures so we say th minus tl over th then this will just be 435 minus 285 then everything over 435 then you find your answer there then after finding the answers you compare them so if the efficiency of an ideal engine is greater than the efficiency of um uh, of a normal engine it means that uh the given data is correct but if the efficiency of uh, a normal engine exceeds the efficiency of the an, uh, of the ideal engine it means that the given data is wrong because an ideal engine gives you the maximum e efficiency so you expect that engine not to have an efficiency that is greater than its ideal efficiency yeah so let's look at the solution so this is what i was talking about you find uh, the normal efficiency it gives you 0 0.56 and then from there you also find the ideal or the cannot efficiency which is 0 0.34 so when you look at these two efficiencies you discover that the efficiency of an ideal is less than the efficiency of the normal uh, i mean the efficiency by which is found by using normal uh, the heat uh, energies which implies that the given data in this expression in, in this uh, uh by this uh, by, by this manufacturer the given data is wrong because uh the cannot efficiency is always supposed to be greater than the normal efficiency that you get from the engine using its energies so that's how you do the calculations let's quickly move on so let's look at kelvin planck statement so kelvin planck statement is also known as the third law of thermodynamics uh it states that there is no engine on earth that exists with uh, a hundred percent efficiency so there's no engine that can exist with a hundred percent efficiency which simply means that there's no engine that can use all the heat uh energy the heat input that can convert all the heat uh energy uh that has been uh, that is an input heat energy to uh work to work there's no without having the losses without having ql without having the heat losses yeah so for every engine we have to understand that there are irreversibilities there so when you say there are irreversibilities it means that there are there is friction there are also other things like heat losses and uh, turbulences that occur during the process as as the engine is running for that reason you discover that the engine will not be 100 percent efficient so 
that's what Planck's uh, statement uh, states. So this is what I'm just talking about. We see the high temperature there, the heat there being converted, uh, all the heat being converted to work. So this doesn't exist. You need to have uh, a Q here, QL, the heat losses. Okay. So that is what that is what uh, Kelvin Planck statement is all about. Then this can be uh, stated formally as no device is possible whose sole effect is to transform a given amount of heat completely into work. Okay, so let us look at refrigerators, air conditioners, and heat pumps. So these they, they just work in a reverse way as the um, as the heat engines. So they just work in the reverse way as the heat engine. So for the heat engine, we learned that uh, QH is used as the input and then the output, we have the work uh, output there, the output work, we have it there, and then we also have QL. Yeah, and then we also have TH this side, TL this side. Yeah, so that this, this was for the heat engine. So meaning if the refrigerators and air conditioners are in the opposite, it means that uh, QL becomes the input. So QL becomes the input together with the work. So the work and QL becomes the in input. And then everything together forms uh, QH. That is the use of, uh, I mean, that is the, the loss or rather the heat loss. Yeah. So this is the heat that is... Uh, uh, the output in short not really the heat loss, but the output heat is QH So what does this mean? It means that a refrigerator uh, Gets air from a room or a system that is at uh, I'll not say yeah, let me say at the low temperature uh, and Deposits it at a high temperature uh, Environment in short. I don't know if that statement is okay with you if you've understood it, but that is what it means means that okay we we all know let me explain it in this way we all know that okay we know that in nature heat move heat moves from a hot substance spontaneously to a cold substance from a hot substance spontaneously to a cold substance that's how heat moves now if you want to move heat from a cold room into a hot room it means that you need something to be doing work meaning you need the machine to help you so in a heat engine or uh, sorry in a refrigerator which moves heat from this uh, cold room into the hot room to move heat from a cold room into the hot room it means that you need something to be doing work something to pull something like a pump to pump that uh, warm heat into a hot room yeah so in this case for refrigerators you have uh, you have a motor that is in the compressor that will help you to pump the heat uh, that will help you to pump the fluid that uh, that has absorbed heat from the cold room uh, into um, yeah in uh, i mean out to pump heat from the cold room to the outside or the rare environment of the fridge that's why you find the fridges most of them are hot behind when you touch them behind there where the compressor is yeah you find that they are usually hot it's because they are removing heat from the uh from the warm environment the environment that is already cold inside there and then they are pulling that heat outside the environment okay so that's what it means so we have a motor that is the compressor there which um which helps to do this work yeah so the work plus the the what is the work plus the low heat energy there you form qh so you say qh since since uh energy there is conserved so we say qh is equal to you add the work and the ql so meaning the work can also just be written as qh minus uh ql that's the work so from there we can derive the efficiency so in this case you discover that the efficiency, we know that efficiency is equal to the output over the input. So the output here is QH, but we'll not use QH because um, we'll not use QH, we're going to use QL. Why are we using QL? Because we know that QL is important in this case because 
uh, if you want to measure how efficient a fridge is, you look at how much uh, how much energy it's able to remove from its cold room there, from its cold environment. How much heat it's able to remove from uh, its um, cold environment to the outside environment. Yeah, so meaning that's how efficient it is. So the heat that is being removed is actually QL, which is the input heat there, QL. So the the Q, so here QL so here QL is the one that can help us to measure the efficiency of a fridge. So instead of using QH since it's the output, we use QL. So after using QL, we say QL divided by uh, the work. Yeah. So divided by the work. The work is the input there. We say output over input. So the work is the output. So from there we can now write this as E is equal to uh, QL over Q, um, I mean our work there is just QH minus QL. So this is the efficiency of the refrigerator and the air conditioner, air conditioners. But when it comes to the heat pump, the heat pump, when you talk about the, 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 the efficiency of the heat pump, the heat pump pumps heat from a cold environment uh, from the cold environment into the system so let's say for instance you have a room eh? you have this room this is a house yeah so now you are living maybe in the pores of the earth where it's very cold and then you you want to warm this environment the inside part of your room there you want to warm this environment how do you do that you get a heat pump so this heat pump will be getting hot hot air from the cold environment this side outside where there is ice it will be getting hot air from the cold environment and pumping it into the room so that the room can be hot so how does that happen or in short let me just explain how to find the efficiency so the efficiency of this so in this in in, in this uh, scenario here which i've put of course it's uh cold air which is being pumped from i mean it's a uh, warm air that is being pumped from the outside environment into the room which is the inside environment so how does that happen or how can we write the efficiency so in this case the most important is qh because qh is the one that we are using inside there it's the one that we're consuming as the hot air or the warm air yeah so QH is the one that we're consuming there, so meaning it's the output, it's the one that we're going to use as the output, and then the work is the input, because there has to be something that should do work this side, to uh, to pump this heat from the cold environment into the warm environment. Yeah, so you have the work, and you have QL there, so you have the work down there, so the work... So we can write this efficiency for the heat pump. This one is for the heat pump. The heat pump. So this one is for the heat pump. And then you have for the air conditioners and refrigerators you use this one. For the heat for the heat pump you use QH over QH minus QL. That's for the heat pump. Yeah, so it's just as simple as this. So let's take a look at some notes. So the operating principle of refrigerators, air conditioners, and heat pumps is just the reverse of the heat engine. I've talked about this. Each operates to, trans to transfer heat out of a cool environment into a warm environment. So this is just the, diag the diagrammatic representation of the air conditioner, refrigerator, and the heat pumps. Okay. So by doing work, heat is taken from the low temperature region, TL, such as the inside refrigerator, and greater amount of heat is exhausted at high temperature, which is the room. Heat QL is removed from cooling coils inside the refrigerator, and heat QH is given off by coils outside the rear of the refrigerator. So I talked about this. So you can see the motor here doing work to pump out the QL and giving out uh, to the environment QH. Okay, so a perfect refrigerator which in which no work is required to pump the heat
from the low uh, temperature region does not exist so a perfect refrigerator does not exist so this is called the Clausius uh, the Clausius statement of the second law of thermodynamics yeah so it's also just the same as the one that we looked at uh, on cannot uh, on what is yeah on cannot engines okay the one that we looked at let me just show you the Kelvin Planck statement so the Kelvin Planck statement is almost the same as the Clausius uh, uh, law of the Clausius statement yeah almost the same so a perfect refrigerator does not exist in nature so it doesn't exist uh, and it's not possible for you to make that I don't know maybe as time goes on but I'm I'm, I'm sure it is it's not possible because the because there are irreversibilities present there you can just reduce the irreversibilities in other words you can just increase the efficiency of the refrigerator you can't make a refrigerator which has 100% efficiency so for the efficiency of the refrigerator um, the the efficiency of the refrigerator and uh, air conditioners and the uh, and the heat pump you don't usually use i mean you don't usually call it as the the efficiency instead you call it the coefficient of performance so we call them COP, COP, that's what we call them. So on that page, I made a mistake by, uh, by writing E to represent the efficiency. We call them COPs, which is the coefficient, I mean coefficient of performance. So the coefficient of performance of uh, a heat engine, sorry, a refrigerator is given by QL over W. And then the coefficient of performance of a heat pump coefficient of performance of the heat pump is given by QH over W and then if we talk about the cannot refrigerator on an ideal refrigerator we so this is the coefficient of performance of the refrigerator or the air conditioner uh, so if we talk about the ideal refrigerator or the uh, ideal um, uh, uh, heat pump we simply talk we're simply talking about these written in temperatures so we also have to understand that their absolute temperatures are directly proportional to the uh to the heat yeah so meaning you also have to know that qh over ql for these for canons is direct proportion to th over tl so meaning you can write uh you can write these expressions in terms of th and ql i mean th and t also so the coefficients of performance of a refrigerator and the air conditioner is this one this one here yeah we use ql because uh, the heat is removed from the inside i explained this uh, that matters from the practical point of view. This makes sense because uh, more heat QL that can be removed from the inside of a refrigerator for a given amount of work, uh, the better the refrigerator is. Yeah. So energy is conserved even in this one. So you have your COP there, which is the coefficient of performance. And then you also have for an ideal refrigerator, not really a perfect one it's just an ideal meaning it, it has the highest air efficiency you use uh, it in terms of t temperature okay so the heat pump uh, heat naturally we know that heat naturally fl flows from a high temperature to a low temperature so for heat pumps they need work for them to, to do the reverse even the refrigerators so I've explained this okay so the heat pump I explained how you come up with the coefficients of the coefficients of performance for a heat pump which is just QH over W so entropy entropy is just the uh, it's just the state of disorder or randomness of a system when exposed to uh, maybe temperature or other external forces that may yeah so the measure of the system's thermal energy per unit temperature that is unavailable for doing work so the measure of the system's thermal energy so entropy is represented by delta s 
the change in enthalpy is just the measure of the system's energy uh, per unit temperature that is unavailable for doing work. So this is just the amount of uh, energy that is not available uh, for doing useful work. Yeah, so that is just enthalpy. So that's the simplest definition of enthalpy. All right. Thank you very much for attending today's lesson. Let's meet in the next to, uh, in the next uh, lecture where we're going to start a new topic, which is vibrations. Shalom, shalom.